Hey everybody, welcome back to Let's Not and welcome back to another Among Us airship video. Alrighty everybody, so I wanted to make this video real quick to talk about every single change that has been made in the brand new airship map from the pre-release version that was released accidentally back in December. So uh, if you guys aren't aware, airship map was actually released first um, by accident only to Nintendo Switch back in about December of last year. And uh, ever since then, uh, tons of people have played it, including myself. And uh, basically what I want to do is I want to talk about every single change that they have made since that map, the pre-release, or I guess you call beta version of the map was released to the current version that we all are now enjoying. Uh, the reason I'm making this video is because a lot of people have uh, been saying that, you know, Inner Sloth did nothing. They should have released the map sooner. Like there were no real changes since the pre-release version. So I wanted to, to help talk about what those changes were. So I'm going to point out uh, all 18 of the changes that I found in the brand new version of the map. And uh, hopefully we can have a discussion about whether or not these warranted the extra few months it took them to release the map. All right, so I'm going to jump in. So some of these changes are going to be really, really small. And some of them are actually going to be really, really big. So I'm going to talk about all the changes, whether or not small or big, and uh, how that affected, you know, how that affected overall the game and what it took them to release this map. Okay, so the very first change I want to talk about is going to be on the download. So this is, again, one of those very small changes. But uh, one thing that we notice here now, instead of saying string missing on the download, or as uh, I like to call it, uh, storm missile, <laughs> uh, we now notice that it says my tablet. So if we go ahead and hit the download here, uh, the whole thing will complete again. And instead of saying storm missile, <laughs> it now just says my tablet. But again, a very little change, but a welcome change nonetheless. The very next change is actually right here next to us with both the rifles and the pistol tasks. And I'm going to go ahead and bundle these into one change because the change they made was the same to both tasks. And that is that now when you pick up rifles, you pick them up one at a time. Same thing with pistols. We'll pick them up one at a time. Um, but again, this is just a very, very slight change that slows down the task a little bit, makes the game a little bit easier for imposters because it slows down the task, obviously, right? And uh, also, once you pick up the rifles, it is no longer grayed out on the table. It is now full color on the table uh next same thing with pistols instead of picking them up uh all at once we now pick them up you know just one at a time right so again a very slight change uh comes with some cool new sound effects uh but a welcome change nonetheless it, again it really makes the, the task a little bit more consistent and it makes the task a little bit more fun to do which is always important right so again another little change but it does fundamentally change how long the task will take you to complete by a very slight margin and uh that will make the game easier for the imposters okay uh, the next change that we want to talk about here is actually going to be the, probably one of the biggest changes, and it is a brand new task. So there were three brand new tasks added to the map that were not in the beta version of the map at all. So we're going to show off all three of those tasks because those are obviously the biggest changes made to the game. So uh, if we go over here and take a look here at uh, this task, we now have the make a burger task. So this task literally just did not exist. Um, and it is one of my new favorite tasks already. So basically, this uh, has you make a burger um, with random ingredients. So we click on the paper here. So we see lettuce, lettuce, tomato, right? So I'll do bun, lettuce, lettuce, tomato, a nice little vegetarian burger here. And it's more like a BLT without the B, I guess. Um, but anyway, uh, there it is. Brand new task added to the map. So these are the changes that I, I was so excited to see, right? Because having played the map before, I was worried there were, wasn't going to be anything to surprise me as I came into the brand new map, right? And a lot of people were complaining that, you know, uh, well, certain aspects of the map had already been spoiled. So by adding this and the other two new tasks that we'll talk about later, they made that is an awesome, very, very welcome change. Well done, developers, and we are all very happy to see that. Okay, so next task is, again, going to be a very simple task, but it's going to have to do with the upload data task over here on Viewing Deck. So if I go ahead and click into the upload viewing uh task right the upload data task we now see that the color of the phone that my character is using uh has to do with the color of my character right so this used to be a red phone no matter what color your character was and they have since updated to be whatever your character is so again just a, a small change but a very welcome change people in among us love their colors right there are color stereotypes people really kind of attach themselves usually to a single color in among us so buying by changing that to be their color it's just a welcome change that shows the devs are listening and they truly care about uh the player and the player's choices especially the color of the jelly bean that you use all right the next change uh change number five is probably and arguably the most uh influential change the largest change made to the game that has the biggest effect on the way the game's played and that is cams so every single cam was changed so let me go ahead and give you guys an idea here of what the old cams looks like um 
But uh, the, the one thing I want you to notice why we pull up that footage is that there used to be seven cams and not six cams. And that's because there used to be two cams in record. So let's look at the old cams and then we'll take a look at the new cams. Okay, so looking at the old cams, we can see that they're all kind of like halfway in between, right? And it's, it's really weird because like we can see through walls and it's like, it, it was definitely a mess. Not that they were bad, right? Because sometimes being able to see like that extra uh, hall of portraits area or that extra area of gap room or lounge was super valuable. But it was really messy, goofy, kind of gross to look at. And having seven cams is so much harder to manage than having six cams. Because as we know from Polis, right, uh, you could miss a kill just by looking at the wrong cam at the right time. So having one extra cam means one extra chance to miss a kill on one of the other cams. So let's take a look at the new cams and how they fixed them. So again, these cams seem like they were more well thought out, right? They, they have full pictures. Uh, the records room is now, uh, they combined both of those cams into a single cam which is fine because we can see the whole records room. We do miss out on the, obviously the gap room on the kind of the left side and the lounge on the right side, which those would have been really nice cams to have, but it's okay. I understand, you know, we have to, we have to make some cuts. Um, but there again, there's the records cam. Uh, security now no longer looks at Hall of Portraits, but that's okay too. Um, you can still very clearly see your own character. Then we have Cargo Bay, of course, and Needing Room. So again, definitely some huge changes to the cams and probably the biggest change made overall from the pre-release version of this map to the version that we have here today. So, all right, again, that's cams. Uh, the next change that we're gonna talk about is a very a very little change, but uh, it's, it's, it's a very welcome change nonetheless, and that's to the Divert Power Task, right? So if I jump over to the Divert Power Task here in Electrical, they have updated the entire panel here. So a brand new graphic, right? So I'm actually going to uh, minimize my task screen here for just a second. So all of these things, armory, meeting room, they, they updated all of these little labels to actually be the names of the room. So if we look at the old label here, we can see that uh, all of these were not the case, right? So based on the old label, we were using some placeholder names like lab, med bay, some of the old stuff from the old map and this whole please fix thing, which is just hilarious, like th that it's broken and it just has a sticky note that says please fix on it. Like that's fantastic. It really... Fits in with the humor of Among Us well, and uh, is, is a wonderful little addition to, to this otherwise pretty boring task. So great addition to Divert Power, and uh, obviously, you know, stuff like this takes time. They have to build this, this graphic out again for the new map. So again, to kind of give us an idea of why it took them so much longer to release. Okay. So the next change that we're going to talk about is we're going to actually just going to run straight through medical here because there's actually has not been any changes to the medical section. Uh, and we're going to go over to everybody's favorite task, the unlock safe or the golden safe task. So this was one of the tasks that were changed in the pre-release version, the main version. And the biggest change is that it, A, it just looks a lot cleaner now. And the reason for that is because predominantly is the, the silver handle is now black until you're ready to use it, right? So it's just a change to make the task a little bit more consistent. And now it will turn silver once you're done with the task. So let me go ahead and show you guys what I mean. So let's go ahead and complete this task. So we're over to five to two. All right. We're over to five. And then over to two and then all the way back around to three. All right. So once we do that, the wheel will now black out, right? Which is something that didn't happen at all before. And the handle will turn silver, letting us know that, hey, you did it successfully. You can now turn it. Again, it, it makes the task a little bit easier since the task was very difficult. And uh, obviously, I'm sure they listened to our feedback playing the pre-release version of the map. And they heard us say that this task is really difficult, doesn't quite make sense. So they made it just a little bit more consistent, a little bit easier to tell when you're done with the task, right? And uh, again, make the task more consistent for 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 any real any players that are playing the map. So again, a very welcome change. Okay. So the next change is actually um, a, a pretty pretty important change is that it has to do with this light sabotage here. So uh, this used to be in the previous version of the map the only light panel that would work. So even though the light panel graphics, like the little box, existed in Gap Room and existed over in viewing before, they didn't do anything, right? Uh, you could only fix lights from this one singular panel. Um, and I'll, let me show you guys uh, from some footage from the pre-release map that shows that, right? So here we see the lights is sabotage and there are no arrows popping up on my screen saying that I can go to any of the other light panels. This is the only light panel that you can use to fix lights. So I imagine this change was made because they weren't really ready to sync the light panels yet. So in the new map, when you sabotage lights, if I'm fixing this light panel and somebody else fixing the one over on viewing deck, we can both mess with each other. Like I could mess with their switches. They can mess with my switches. I imagine they had not figured out how to implement that yet. And that's why there was only one light panel in the beta release. But again, a welcome change. And I love the fact that I can mess with your light switches from the other side of the world, right? So two imposter games, you could really coordinate that change. Okay. 
So change number nine, and this is a change that I get called a hacker for even today in my shorts, is the stall doors. So back in the original version of the map, there were no doors. You could just walk right through. They're basically rugs. Um, but now they've changed the stall doors to be actual doors for the toilet task and the lounge. Uh, so again, a very big change. And the doors will actually shut when you're in there, completely hiding you and blocking you from vision. So this can be a very good way to hide from an imposter if you guys are done with tasks. It's just an awesome place for the hide and seek variants of the game, of course. Uh, but again, a very welcome change. And I think this is probably one of my favorite changes that it doesn't really do a whole lot, but it's just really satisfying to run through and like open a slam open all the doors like you're looking for somebody. I, it, it just feels really good. The sound effects work really well. And I think it's, it's just a very, very welcome change. Okay. So the next change, we're actually going to run through here, um, both of these rooms, and we're going to go over to showers. So the next change, again, is one of the biggest changes of all. And it is going to be the showers pick up towel task. So this is going to be one of the three new tasks that were added to the game um, just for this version of the release. So basically the way that this task works is that you go and you pick up eight towels. So they'll, they'll always be highlighted yellow, right? And once you have picked up all eight towels, I think our final one is here in the shower as well. Uh, you basically take these showers um, and you, <laughs> these showers. You go ahead and you pick up these towels and you basically throw them in the laundry basket. Now you can do this one of two ways. You can either just pick them up and you know put them in there like you're lame or something. Or you can do what I do and just randomly toss them and hope they go in and usually spend all of your time picking them up afterwards <laughs> from, from, the, from this side of the basket. Uh, one thing to note, this task is uh, not quite fixed for mobile. Like if a, if a towel gets stuck in this bottom left where your like cursor icon is, you may have to open and close the task. But, uh, but yeah, a fun task, a fun task nonetheless, and one of my new favorites for the new map. Okay, so uh, that is going to be the second of the three new tasks added and the 10th change overall. The 11th change, we're going to go over to the other new task, which is, is one of my all-time favorites, which is the bonk shower task, right? So basically, uh, this task is named showers, fix showers, and the way that it works is you kind of bonk the shower head um, to, to fix it, right? And you can do it in a single bonk if you get lucky, depending on where the shower starts. So it starts off in a random spot. Uh, although I have to admit, I have never gotten in a single bonk before. So that's pretty cool. Uh, but basically the way that works is you bonk it left and right and left and right and left and right until you finally get it perfectly center. And then that is how you complete the task. So uh, yeah, kudos to me, I guess, for uh, for getting it in one bonk. That's it's never happened before. So uh, video luck, I guess. Streamer luck? Is, is that what it's called? Anyway, uh, let's move on. So again, guys, that is going to be the 11th task. Uh, Task number uh, 12, or, or change number 12, which has to do with the task, is the dreaded shower task. Or as it is aptly named, correctly named, the main hall decontaminate. So this used to be known as the dreaded shower task in the pre-release version of the map, because this task would break your game. Uh, after this task hit 0%, so we'll see it hit 0% and finish here, but in the pre-release version, let me go ahead and pull up and show you guys what used to happen in the beta version of this task. So as we can see, after we hit zero it would keep going down infinitely into the negative you would never leave this task and basically be stuck here until somebody killed you let you out call a meeting but basically it would break your entire game so uh yeah the shower task definitely a no-no before uh so again a welcome change obviously we don't want tasks that crash your games so they had to fix this before the final version of the map released okay but again that is going to be the shower task uh so i'm going to go ahead and jump back over here um, and switch over to imposter. But as I do, I want to mention something really quick. Uh, there were a couple, there was one other change uh, that they made. So I guess change 13 is a couple of the tasks, namely the vault polish ruby task and the put away photos task on the Nintendo switch. They would show a green hand, uh, no matter what doing those tasks, depending on what, no matter what your color was like a dark green hand, uh, that has been fixed. If you're on those versions on the Nintendo switch version, that will now be the color of your character. So, uh, that was a change, uh, that we will only see on those on the Nintendo switch version of the map. Uh, and since I'm recording on PC, I can't show you it here, but uh, you guys can uh, just take my word for it, right? Right? Anyway, I'll go ahead and show you guys what the green hand looked like, too, from, uh, the, from the Vault Ruby task real quick. So, yeah, so that has now been changed to be whatever your character's color is, no matter what. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and switch over now to Imposter and show you guys a couple changes that were unique just to the Imposter experience. All right. So the uh, so we talked a little bit about the light panel, and just to prove to you guys now, if I were to sabotage lights... All three of the light panels will show up. Actually, I sabotaged the wrong thing, didn't I? All right, so apparently I sabotaged Crash Course. So uh, one second, guys. All righty. So now, sorry about that, guys. So now if I sabotage lights, we will see that I have three panels 
uh, that I can possibly fix, right? Three arrows determining where I can go to fix lights. Uh, so again, that is, again, just to prove to you guys now that the light sabotage is working correctly. You can fix it at any of the three panels. All right, so let's go ahead and fix lights really quickly. And let me talk about uh, the two other changes that were made uh, to the imposter. So the first change, very, very simple, right? Um, they moved, they very slightly moved where the electric sabotage is. So if we look at the electric sabotage here and we look at old footage, they just moved the icon a little bit. It doesn't make a huge change unless you played a ton on the previous map and you're like, you have muscle memory on where to push it. But obviously a very, very little change. It just makes it a little bit more consistent. All right. The next change they made for imposters is quite a bit bigger and it has to do with this event here. So previously this event here could only go um, to showers. Like this was the entire event course from here to showers and there was no path back to records, right? Um, meaning that records was the very first ever one-way event introduced in Among Us. And we thought this was initially intentional, but uh, it would basically take you here and then there'd be no way to get back to the records event. So when they, when they originally released this, we kind of thought, oh, that's cool. We have a one-way event. We have a way to escape, but we know if we see someone there, that has to be potentially where they came from and you can't rent and you also can't vent the records. Turns out this was not an intentional change and uh, the developer did not mean to have a one-way event. So this was corrected in the final version of the map. And now all three of these events connect, which again, I think is a little bit of a shame. I thought it was kind of cool as a concept to have a one-way event. Obviously having these events connects makes it much easier for the imposter to use these events. So uh, I don't know if I agree with it because the imposter already has an easy enough time on airship because airship is so giant. And there are so many places to hide bodies. But again, it's, it's, it is definitely a consistency look and feel change that probably needed to happen. Okay, so just a couple more changes here, guys. Uh, the first change that I want to talk about is the ladder dance, right? So if you guys aren't familiar with the ladder dance, basically the way that the old animations worked is that whenever a player climbed a ladder, there was a chance that they would get stuck on that ladder and they would have to use that ladder kind of like a dance and they'd, they would appear fine to themselves, but to everybody else, they would appear that they were dancing. This was by far my favorite glitch of the pre-release. And I'm actually kind of sad to see it go. I have not seen it happen at all in the current airship map, which is, again, is a, is a shame because it was hilarious. So I love this glitch, but yeah, guys, I have not seen, I have not heard any reports of people seeing it. So unfortunately my favorite glitch does now appear to be gone. Okay. But anyway, you know, it probably was for the better. So again, just a couple more changes here that I want to talk about. So I'm actually going to go across here and we are going to, we're going to go ahead and vent across and let's talk about the meeting button. So one of the changes they made to the meeting button is a very simple change. It's just a sound effect change. So if I go on here and I click the emergency button, um, let me go ahead and show you guys what the sound sounds like now as compared to what it sounded like before. So again, just a new, just a new sound that didn't used to exist. I think it's a really cool change and I'm kind of glad that they made that change. And uh, if you notice and you're wondering, wait, why is dummy nine dead? It's because I actually hit the wrong sabotage earlier, edited that out. And uh, yeah, don't, don't worry about that. <laughs> All right. But anyway, uh, the, the final change that I want to talk about guys, change number 18 to make a grand total of 18 changes overall made on this map is the has to do with the eject screen so i'm gonna vote myself here or actually that's fine we can vote dummy all right so we're gonna go ahead and proceed with the vote so in the switch pre-release version of the map there used to be a giant mouse cursor that would be all over your uh, eject screen so let me go ahead and show you guys what that looks like really quick Alrighty guys, so that's it. That is, those are the 18 changes that I have personally noticed with the brand new map from the pre-release. So what do you guys think? Uh, was it worth waiting an extra few months? So almost four months for, for these changes? Or was it not? Like, do you guys think that uh, they should have released the map earlier, even in its more broken state, uh, without the few new tasks and said, all right guys, everybody can have this, everybody can use this, but it's not quite ready? Or do you think it's a good thing we waited and now have the map in its current state? I, I'm honestly curious what you guys think. Was it worth it? Was it worth the wait? So let me know what you guys think in the comments. And uh, as always, guys, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. It really does help me out more than you guys will ever know. And uh, if you guys want to see more Among Us Pokemon or horror game content, definitely hit that subscribe button. All right, guys, that'll be it. And uh, I will see you next time.